Good afternoon. A couple of days ago, on Thursday, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention released a report titled National Vital Statistics, which found that the, that the U.S.'s fertility rate in 2017 was 16% below the level needed for a, for a population to replace itself, South Dakota and New Mexico being the only two states in the country with total fertility rates above replacement levels, the report found. Washington, D.C. at the lowest fertility rate. And this is significant because it's a 30-year low. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of the story. Now, I've seen some people who have tried to say that this is because people uh, can't afford things and they're choosing to just, you know, not have any for that reason. I, I will give that maybe about 40, 30 percent of the credit for why this is the case, although we know plenty of people who have children that, you know, can't afford them. So that's not really that um, innovative. I think the real, the, the bigger reason, the real reason, one you won't see on any of these uh, news organizations is very much tied into what I talk about on this channel um, on occasion. And to give you kind of a refresher course, when I was in 11th grade, which was the final year of me going out and for the most part talking to people in person, I sat back and I said to myself, what can a woman give me that I can't give myself? And, you know, it, I, was, I was puzzled for a couple of minutes. And I thought, oh, a, a child. Um, and so, I, you know, I've had people who, when they've heard that, will say, oh, my God, you're too young, all of this, you know, ageist nonsense. Um, but the, the general idea is that when you meet someone and you know them over a set number of years or, you know, however long, you feel more inclined and more trustworthy of that person if they've shown themselves to be someone that you can rely on. And that's not been a characteristic that I think a lot of um, women have, have demonstrated toward their, you know, their male contemporaries, which is why I said that it's likely that there are plenty of men who, such as myself, are open or even really want to, let's say, father a child, but because the females that they have to work with are so um, single-minded as far as, you know, their concern for anything, they're, not, they're never going to get that chance. Or if they do, it's going to be at a period by which they've chosen to say, screw it. Um, I have a, a best friend who I've known for, I'm going to use this as an example of what I'm talking about here. I have a best friend I've known for 13 years. I met him when I was in second grade. He was in first grade. And um, when we started speaking, or whether when we stopped going to school together, we continued corresponding uh, by phone calls, text messages. Sometimes he would come over my house when he was in, in the town or whatever. So this interaction was able to last year after year after year after year after year because both of the people involved decided to make it last, to work together to ensure that it remained. When you have a group of women who use most men that they talk to as filler, Kind of like an anime where it's it's there to serve the purpose of whatever special or you know plot important thing comes around next, uh, and you know you have a lot of women who will talk to men just so they until they find some other man that they think is more appealing. Uh, <laughs> those aren't genuine interactions; those are disingenuous scammer type people. In my video, proof romance is a scam. I recounted a woman who was in my uh, inbox on Reddit, and she had no problem sitting in there for weeks talking to me in a very sexual manner. Text messages there are the written responses are in that video. Um, up until she found a guy in real life or someone that she liked in real life and then said, oh, uh, I want to date him. So can we be friends? And man, screw that. <laughs> but, you know, these are the kinds of things that, people are males anyways are seeing and they're saying well look if i'm going to spend all this time talking to these people and getting emotionally invested in them just for them to cut it off at the you know flip of a hat screw it um and you know there's a lot of instances where people going back to this relationship stuff a lot of people will say you know there's something wrong with that guy um and i always push back against that because if, if there was something wrong with me for example why would there be so many other men who have this problem um, but also, I don't believe you would have anyone talking about the way I looked, the way I speak, 
if this relationship thing did not exist. That's why it's it feels disingenuous because if I can, if me and this friend of mine can sit here and and you know be very successful in school or work or otherwise live productive lives that do not impair anyone around us, what is what is really wrong with us? I don't I don't understand. Um, but again, it's this idea that you can you can assign some principal blame to the man that you can't give to the woman. Um, and people don't want to face the reality that women are going to be the deciders of who gets to procreate and reproduce by virtue of having a vagina, um, which is why it always felt dumb to me to blame it all on the man. But, you know, that, that's, that's their resolve. Uh, one other point I want to make is that when I was talking to a, uh, the, the used car saleswoman, who I referred to in that video as well, Basically, this this woman that was slightly older than me, who tried to, you know, who failed miserably, but attempted to um, impart wisdom that you would expect to hear out of a, you know, Sears catalog or some other generic thing. I asked her point blank, you know, when do you think this is going to change? Um, and at, you know, at this point, at, I was twenty. She said, "This was her her exact response: five, ten, maybe fifteen years." So I am literally going to have to spend another, you know, double, almost double portion of my life trying to get a partner who may still end up being as rotten as all of the other people I've spoken to for the most part. Um, and I said to her, you know, here's the thing. Let's pretend in 10 years I am more successful on YouTube than I am now. Just let's let's speculate on that. Let's say that I am out of college. I have, you know, some position. Um, I think anyone, you know, with time is better off than where they were when they were in their early 20s or whatever. I'm not going to want any of these people because I'm going to be this established character who's going to say, well, you know, when I was coming up, you didn't give me the time of day. But now that you see me in this position that is, um, I guess, something you like, suddenly you want to show you you want to appear, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of what what is so phony about the things that are written online. You as the man who, you know, does not have control over what someone thinks or likes, um, are put in this position of having so much power over what a woman can possibly think of you, which is why they put up all this, you know, relationship advice kind of stuff. Um, and they pretend as though there's no one who's going to see the advice they give you and say, I don't care about that. That's actually more sexist than any of the stuff that's been said here. I've always, uh, you know, preach the idea that not all women were the same. You know, it's a small group that actually will recognize the opportunity in front of them, but that still is itty bitty. Um, but you get the point that they will, they're more sexist than any of the people that they call sexist because they're telling you all women like men who, uh, I don't know, don't wear glasses or something else that is not true or otherwise indicating that they have this hive mind. Um, and when you square that up with, this birth rate going down, ask yourself if every single woman that can reproduce at this point in time, do you believe all think the same? They all like a certain kind of male. Does anyone believe that? I don't. But let's go back to the, um, the crux of what I was saying. If I, for example, had um, an overweight person, overweight woman rather, go and try to approach me, I would not be interested in her. And I would, I would waste no time pretending as if I was. And someone can say that's you being shallow, that's you being uh, conceited. And I'll just simply say that's, that's me being honest. That's me not wanting to waste the time of a person that has done nothing to me. So when I see you know, guys talking to women online that have 10 or 20 other people in their DMs or text messages or what, whatever of that ilk, I see a bunch of scammers effectively because these are people who know they have no interest in you or if they do, you're competing with half a dozen other people and are still willing to put you in a position to waste your time talking to them. But yeah, that, that really uh, solidifies the you know, reason to hate this scenario because there are people who want it, to, just like myself, to be parents um, that are going to get the response from those who hear us online that will say, it didn't happen because you quit too early or something to that effect. And I'm going to say, look, you know, li real life, and this is, you know, what causes so much friction between me and a lot of my contemporaries, so I don't speak to many of them. Uh, real life does not work like a video game or a movie. When you waste someone's week, month, or year, they can't get that back. That's why I don't talk to women that I don't find physically attractive. 
because I would I would feel bad to waste the time of someone I was never serious about. But if someone came out, just like even if uh, this changes, right? I'm never going to get that time back. If I if I met someone tomorrow who could walk on water and metaphorically, of course, met everything that I liked, it's not going to erase all of the years of school where I was having people, you know, not give me the time of day when I bent over backwards for them. Um, and when you when you hear that kind of perspective, which is, you know, I'm I'm everything has a breaking point. And, and you know, some people when they when they get tired of it, they they start cursing, they, you know, go and assault someone. When I get tired of it, I just stop talking to these people because I have too many things in my life, whether it be a project, whether it be people that actually will respond back to me that I have platonic interactions with, to where I would throw away any of that um, for the sake of possibly getting a woman. So... Hey, you know, we just we just don't click. Me and me and a lot of people uh, who you know are currently around, we don't we don't mix. Let's play a game. Go out and approach at least a dozen women. Talk to each one for a month. So this this means that you're most likely going to have to get um, talk to maybe a hundred of them. Some of them will just run you out very quickly. But talk to one for a month. One for two months, one for three months, one for four months, one for five months, one for six, one for seven, one for eight, one for nine, one for ten, one for eleven, and one for a whole a full year. And after each one of those periods of times is reached, of time rather, ask that person two questions. If they want to have children and if they'd want to be married. And also if they say yes to these two questions, ask them if they want to do it with you and tell them that you, you will be in a um, partnership with them, that you, you'll both make decisions, compromise, you know, all of that and see what the response is. I guarantee you that it is overwhelmingly no, no, thank you. And the interaction dies out very quickly after that, because most of these modern women have one thing, one goal, and that is to do things that they are entirely behind. Um, you might have a couple of women that actually at some point would like to have children. Uh, but when they're presented with a person who says, I want to do this with you and form a partnership, you know, they're going to say, screw it. Even if they preach the, you know, wanting to be married and all the other, you know, lip service that they might give to that idea. Because when it's, present it directly to them, it's a foreign concept all of a sudden. It's something that they could never get behind because they never expect it to be so directly pushed right in front of their face. And I'm simply saying this because I, I want you to understand, I, I live by a doctrine when it comes to what I believe. Um, Benjamin Franklin quote, believe none of what you hear, only half of what you see. So I can get told online over and over again, uh, oh, there's good ones out there. They're, you know, they're over there. Blah, 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 blah. But if I see loads of them, which is this happened four years, what was it, four or five years ago, lusting after some uh, guy in jail's mugshot without knowing anything about him other than that he's in prison, um, all the while being told that I need to, you know, do all of these things to possibly get with one person, I'm going to think it's a bunch of, uh, you know, it's viral marketing. It's a scam. That's why, you know, we, we watch, I, I looked at uh, my friend, for example, again, I'm going back to him. And I said to him, you, you know, you and I have, have almost nothing in common in physical appearance. And yet we're both going to get told about all this stuff we need to do to, uh, you know, to appeal marketable to this group. I told them it's all homogenized. They, they want everybody to look the same, think the same, act the same. And, you know, there's guys who are not into political stuff like I am, as he, which is what he is not into that. Um, there are people who are into just all kinds of different things, sports, uh, games, stuff I'm not into. And they, we all still get the same results. What does that tell you? It's not really about what the men are into. It's about the women choosing to say, 
I don't care what you're into as long as you don't fit my little uh, list of demands. I'm going to toss you aside. So all your dreams of wanting to, you know, get married, have a child, do something about this birth rate, dashed. Just like that. 